that you're still here for the last talk of the day. So without further ado, let's begin. The chemistry and reactivity of elements is guided by their ability to lose, accept, or share elements. And the transition elements have a very rich chemistry <coughs> because they exhibit variable valency and have many oxidation states owing to their incomplete D shell. So, the more number of oxidation states an element has, the more number of compounds it forms. Today, I would like to show you that by choosing specific ligands, it is possible to increase the oxidation state of an element beyond what is currently known. And I will do so by choosing zinc as an example. But first, for those of you who are not in chemistry, let me begin by defining both the oxidation state and the oxidation number. The oxidation state is defined as the degree of oxidation of an atom in a substance and it is expressed by a number called the oxidation number. To put it simply, the oxidation number is the charge an atom would have in a molecule if the bonding were completely ionic. And these oxidation states are important because they help us to understand reaction mechanisms, redox reactions, catalysis, and so on. And it has also been seen that unusually high oxidation states play an important role in biochemistry. Now you may wonder why I have chosen zinc as the example. Zinc is one of the group 12 elements, also known as the post-transition elements. Unlike the transition elements, these post-transition elements have completely filled D orbitals because of which only their, um, I'm sorry, only their outermost S orbitals are involved in bonding because of which the most stable oxidation state of these elements is the plus 2 oxidation state. However, we know that the size of elements decrease as we go down the periodic table and as a consequence, the third ionization potential of these elements decrease. In other words, the ability of the inner filled D electrons to be lost or shared increases. Because of this, mercury, for its large size and relativistic effects, can be expected to exhibit higher oxidation states. As a matter of fact, in 1976, a mercury 3 complex was experimentally reported and shortly after that AGF4 where mercury is in plus 4 oxidation state was theoretically predicted and it took 20 years before this could be experimentally verified. However, zinc is not yet known to be in, a, in an oxidation state greater than plus 2. Why is that? Is it because it's too small or is there something lacking? Let's find out. If I attach three individual ligands to zinc, let's call the ligand X for simplicity, where X is monovalent and is more electronegative than zinc, then zinc is assigned an oxidation state of plus three. So how do we make this kind of a plus 3 state of zinc? In order to find out what we don't know, let us carefully think about what we don't know. We know that the highest known oxidation state of zinc is plus 2 because its third ionization potential is the highest among its con congeners. And if we want to achieve higher oxidation states, we need to use very strongly oxidizing ligands. And for the past 30 years, superhalogens have been known. These superhalogens are molecules which have extremely high electron affinities. In other words, superhalogens are strongly oxidizing ligands. So our objective was to investigate, can superhalogens stabilize the plus 3 oxidation state of zinc? In order to study this, 
We conducted a systematic study of the interaction of zinc with three different ligands of successively increasing electron affinity. The first being fluorine, which is a halogen with an electron affinity of 3.4 electron volt. The second being BO2, a super halogen with an electron affinity of 4.4 electron volt. And the third being AUF6, a super halogen with an electron affinity of 8.6 electron volt. And we performed a systematic study of zinc X3, where X represents the ligands. And uh, in this connection, I should also mention that we did study the interaction of zinc with various ligands, I mean various number of ligands, from the uh, ligands being one, up to one ligand to three ligands, but for the plus three oxidation state of zinc, only uh, zinc X3 is relevant, so I'm not going to talk about the other results. And we use the B3 with hybrid functional, the SDD basis set for gold, and the 6311 plus G star basis for zinc, boron, oxygen, and fluorine. And we performed all our calculations using the Gaussian 03 and Gaussian 09 software. So here we are with the optimized structure of zinc trifluoride. Now at first glance, it appears as if zinc is attached to two, three individual fluorine ligands. However, if we look closer, we see that two of the zinc atoms are very close to each other. In fact, they are so close that the distance between them is only slightly longer than the FF bond length in fluorine minus, isolated fluorine minus. So we follow the contour diagram around the two close fluorine atoms in zinc trifluoride and an isolated fluorine <coughs> minus ion. And what do we see? We see that there is a striking similarity in the two contour diagrams, which suggests that the two close fluorine atoms in zinc trifluoride are quasi-molecular. So the plus three oxidation state of zinc is ruled out in zinc trifluoride. Also, if we look at the fluorine-fluorine bond energies, we can understand why two fluorine atoms would like to interact with each other because the bond energies are more than one E, which is quite high, right? And we also find that because of this, zinc trifluoride would fragment into zinc difluoride and fluorine. So now let's increase the electron affinity of a ligand a little bit and come to zinc BO2 whole thrice. And what do we observe here? We see that here zinc is not attached to three individual ligands. Here zinc is attached to one BO2 ligand and one B2O4 ligand. And this is because the dimerization of BO2 is very precise. So it's going to release about 1.7 electron volt of energy and dimerize because of which we do not see three separate ligands attached at all. So the plus three oxidation state of zinc is pulled up. However, we were able to find a structure where the BO2 ligands attach individually with zinc, but this structure is about one EV higher in energy than the ground state. So our conclusion is still valid. Now, coming over to zinc, AUF6 whole twice. What do we observe? <coughs> Just like in zinc trifluoride, we see that two of the AUF6 moieties are very close to each other. But neither the dimer of AUF6 nor the anion of the dimer of AUF6 are stable. In other words, these two close AUF6 moieties in zinc trifluoride are not quasi molecules. Also, we have found, we have studied the stability of this cluster with respect to fragmentation and we find that along all the channels we have studied so far, the cluster is stable. Therefore, we can conclude that zinc AUF6 whole thrice is a stable molecule of zinc in the plus 3 oxidation state. So our calculations indicate that this kind of cluster should be stable at least in the gas phase. However, if we want to make this kind of very unusual compounds, we should be able to make this in the bulk phase or in the condensed phase. How do we go about doing that? We did a little bit 
could have measured your search and we found that zinc AOF6 hole twice is a known salt. And it has been prepared using the following reaction scheme. So we calculated the energy associated with this particular reaction scheme and we find that the energy is negative, meaning this reaction is for site, it will take place. And this synthesis was performed at room temperature. And in chemistry, it is very well known that just by altering the ratio of the reactants, it is possible to get new products. <coughs> so we are suggesting that just by changing the ratio of the reactants in the reaction scheme, maybe we will be able to get zinc AOF6 whole thrice. And we have calculated the energy associated with this process, and we find that the process is the, and the energy is extremely exothermic, meaning this reaction should be for site. Of course, for a successful synthesis, it is not only the enthalpy that is important, it is also entropy. And if you look at this reaction, we see that a lot of molecules are reacting and giving us one molecule. So there will be a substantial decrease in entropy if we attempt this synthesis. But one way to counter that would be to attempt the synthesis at very low temperature. So, to conclude, our results show that it is possible to achieve new oxidation states of an element by using specific ligands. And it is also important that these ligands do not dimerize because that would bring down the oxidation state. And we have predicted zinc AUF6 whole thrice to be a stable molecule of zinc in the hitherto unknown plus 3 oxidation state. The significance of our results is that it not only shows a way to enhance the chemistry of zinc, but it also opens the door for the synthesis of new molecules in unusually high oxidation states using the strong oxidizing properties of superhalogens. And I would like to thank my advisor Professor Puru Jena and my group members. And I would like to acknowledge the DOE, DETRA, and NERSC for providing us with the funding and the computational resources, respectively. And that brings us to the end of my talk. Thank you. Okay. That's an interesting talk. So, that's uh, my suggestion. If you consider the additional electron in a vast system, electron should be considered as a constituent of the system. Such a, such a case as delta H must be down, go down. Electron should be considered. Electron is a count of uh, anion in such a case. You, you don't consider such a case. Uh, could you say that once again? So like the as a kind of anion. If you consider the electron, small, such a compound will be more stable. Oh, you mean that like zinc gold F3 minus? Zinc, uh, zinc and, and, and complex and electron. Yes, yes. We, in fact, we have done those kind of studies and we find that this is in fact a hyperhalogen which has an electron affinity <laughs> of about 9 electron volts. So it is true it's stable in the negative, as a negative ion. But then the oxidation state is plus two. We wanted to see if we can also make it stable as the neutral, so that it has the oxidation state plus two. Yes, such a, such, such a molecule is everywhere made. An electron. Yes, yes, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Have you checked either by calculating hooligan populations or by investigating the wave functions if the charge state of C is plus three? So you are actually asking if the D or D electrons are participating or not, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, the oxidation state has nothing to do with uh, D or by the participation. Because, let's take methane for example. It's a completely covalent molecule, right? The oxidation state of carbon is assigned to be minus 4. Because the oxidation state is assigned assuming 100% ionic bonding. This is by definition. Second of all, yes, we did do it. We um, calculated the natural bond orbital charges and also the NPA analysis. And we find that so far it appears as if the D electrons are
are not really participating. In fact, one electron is being transferred to one AUF6 moiety, and the other electron is being shared by the other two AUF6 moieties. No more questions, Anil. Uh, actually, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, Zip F3. You showed and you said that the chlorine are more quasi-molecular, right? And why is that when you did the fragmentation analysis, you have zinc F2 plus F rather than zinc F and F2? I do not understand. You mean for zinc trifluoride, you mean? Yes. Oh. Uh, because the plus 2 oxidation state of zinc is most stable. So, but, but isn't it, it is already quasi, you said that zinc F3, the F2 is more like a molecule, it's a quasi molecule, right? That does not necessarily mean that that would be the most favorable fragmentation pathway. Because how a molecule will preferentially break, maybe it can break like that, but there are, um, energetically speaking, zinc F2 will be more favorable. If we look at the transition states, the activation energies, it could be that the transition the activation energy for the breaking up into zinc F and F2 can be low. But energetically, zinc F2 will be formed because zinc is in the most stable plus 2 state. But F2 is also very stable, isn't it? Yes, F2 is formed over there. When it breaks up, F2 is formed. It doesn't form through here. It forms F2. I thought you said zinc F2 plus F, isn't it? No, if two molecules of Zinc trifluoride will react to give two molecules of zinc difluoride and one molecule of chlorine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Very much.